Hi and welcome back. As I mentioned in my last video, my newest world only has the a default theme so far, the spiral theme to be precise. And as I also mentioned, I want to change that soon. So now it's time to show you step by step how I approach my theme development. In my previous CSS videos, I've tried to show you the basics and now it's time to get down to business. To develop your own themes on World Anvil, you will need at least a master subscription. Grandmaster or above is helpful because then you can use all the nice bootstrap features like creating a top navigation and building lots of your own containers. Basically, however, master is enough to customize the world to your liking. You will also need images. I create mine with Stable Diffusion or Midjourney and edit them in Affinity Photo 2. Stable Diffusion is free and if you have an NVIDIA graphics card with enough memory, you can easily install it on your computer and run it locally. Affinity Photo will cost you about 40 euros or 40 dollars once, but you can also use any other image editing software including Photoshop or GIMP. In the last step, you will need a code editor. Personally, I use Visual Studio Code, but whatever one suits your needs is the right one. However, it should be able to provide you with code highlighting for CSS. This step has nothing to do with the theme per se, however, it helps me to realize which categories I need, which I want to display as books, and which I don't. It is also significantly easier to design the table of contents if you have a certain category structure in place. Personally, I prefer to orientate myself on the structure of the chapters in rule books. Why? It's very familiar to me and it makes many things easier. And it also shows you where the weaknesses of your div category divisions are. Normally, I would say that if there are more than 10 articles in a certain field of your world building, then it deserves its own category. If you want, you can also add all your articles to the corresponding structure. I don't do this because the articles so far only contain the summer camp articles and I do this with the entries when I am allowed to edit them again because I don't know and I'm not sure if moving categories will reset the article edit date. In my second step, I will decide how large the images I want to use in my theme should be. This includes the header format, but also book covers, character portraits, landscape images, and my image dividers. The size of your images can determine whether the theme will appear overloaded, how quick it will load, and how easy you can group your content around your images. Nevertheless, you should set your header images in particular to the breakpoints of your highest resolution that you realistically expect your viewers to have. In my case, that's my own 4K monitor, which I do most of my work at. For me, a size of 1792 pixels by 672 pixels for a header image has turned out to be a reasonable size and it will scale up and down nicely from there. I want to leave it that way because of that. For my background image, I choose the native resolution of my 4K monitor as a basis and will scale it down or up based on my CSS. The book covers will get a 4x3 format, preferably slightly larger than too small. I will go for 1200 by 900 pixels. Because it's a bit easier, I will keep the book cover format for my landscape images too, while for portraits I go with a 5x8 resolution and will prefer a larger number of pixels here too, which then can be scaled down as needed. I have opted for 800 by 1280 for this. This will only leave me with the images I want to use as dividers. 
4096 by 144 is my, a pretty good resolution in my opinion. And again, with like all my images with 96 pixels per inch, of course. Once you have decided your image sizes, you should create templates for them in your image editor so that you can create them easily. I also recommend creating placeholder images that you can use in your theme and in your world building if you don't have a final image yet. This will make your writing workflow a little bit easier. Once I have these templates, I will create the background image for the world and the default header image. While many articles get their own headers, I prefer a so-called wildcard header, which is simply applied to every other article. My placeholders, so to speak. I usually use the same image for this and for the front page. While the background image is slightly less important, I actually like having it ready before I start the actual design work. Since my artistic talent is on stick figure level and Games Workshop does not provide us with a fan side kit of graphics, I generate my images with stable diffusion or mid journey depending on what I like at the time and what I need. Then I will edit them in Affinity Photo 2. How much or how little you edit them is up to you, of course, but you should convert the images to the smaller JPEG format so that you don't clutter up your storage on World Anvil. This applies to all your images that you will use on World Anvil and that are not icons, which will probably need the transparency of a PNG file. When it comes to my color schemes, I will cheat a little bit. I usually generate a color scheme from a header image using an online tool or like with the Copic markers or Citadel colors, I create a color palette in my image editing software and work with these. For Warmer 40K, it's of course even easier if you have at least one part of the colors in your image editor, that is. You can pick a mini of your choice and use the Citadel Color app to see the color scheme. Of course, these are not created to make a website from them, so I will see how far I can go with these. This is where the madness starts for me. As promised and planned, I want to use different color schemes for different tags in my world. Luckily, the method I am using will make this very easy. In my first CSS related video, I explained how to declare variables and how to use them in your world CSS. For the different color schemes, I will do exactly that. First, I will create my base variable set. This will be used for the front page as well as in any article that doesn't have another style tag attached. This basic scheme is created in the root CSS block as usual. For each additional color scheme, I will create a new CSS block for the respective style tag and redefine the variable set I just created. If you, for example, have the variable bg set to black in your root block, you will create the exact same variable bg in your style blocks for your text too. You will only change your color here if you want to. Each variable that you will not change will just rely on your base variable set here. That's important to know. This method will work with each variable you want to use, like colors, fonts, and even gradients. If you use this method for your color schemes, you will have an easy time adding a new color scheme to your CSS. Just define a new block, add the variables, and then tag the articles you want to use it in with the new style tag. Everything will magically adjust and prettify itself. For my world, I decided on a color scheme based on the Imperial Guard. I will add additional color schemes as I go, but since I already created content for Slanesh, I will add their color scheme right away. And while I'm at it, I can add those for the other three Chaos Gods too. That finishes my work for Chaos. In addition, I will create a Chaos Undivided scheme, which I base on the Black Legion or more precisely on the 
Abaddon miniature. We will see how many color schemes my world will have in the end, as since I am thinking about the orders of the Adeptus Astartes here. When it comes to fonts, I will keep it simple. Titles for the world and the articles will get a nice, more grunge-styled font. I picked Starship Grunge for this. This font is also the one I will use for headings within articles as well as for drop caps, since it's easy to read and has a nice style to it. So I will have a lot of the necessary stuff covered with just one font. For the main body text, I will go for a simple serif font, crimson text. Serif fonts are easy on the eye and make longer text easier to read. In addition to these more practical, advan practical advantages, a serif font will suit the style of Warhammer 40k, which features a lot of elements from our own past, like the Gothic architecture. Serif fonts look more classy in most of the time, so they fit the theme quite well. Last, I will need a font to use for documents, messages and the like. It should have a classic feel, but look different from crimson text. Century suits my needs pretty well, so I picked this one. Next, I decide which icons I want to use and pick the respective icon images. You can of course go for icons from RPG Awesome or Font Awesome if you like. I prefer suitable icon images which I can customize for the respective setting or genre. Don't forget to create your icon variables if you are using custom icon images, just like I explained in my video for the custom icons. If you need some, you can also create additional graphic elements like borders for your images or something like that. Just keep in mind that you will need to adjust them for your styles if you do so. I avoid this because of that and will rather use more elaborate CSS if needed. Now it's time you upload all your graphics and images into a theme folder on World Anvil. Make sure that you name it in an easy recognizable way. This makes it easier to find your images and get the links you need. If you use fonts which are not Google fonts, make sure that you uploaded them to GitHub and embedded them like I explained in the CSS video for your fonts. Next, move on to the style options in your World Anvil backend. Set your global cover, the standard header image and your background image. While you are there, make sure that you did not enter a font color here since this can cause problems with your switching color schemes. If you have some, add your custom header images to the respective articles. Just be aware that this will reset the article edit date, so wait with your summer camp articles until we are allowed to edit again. Next, add book cover images to the categories you want to use book covers for. If you opted for different color schemes, add your style text to your articles. Remember, these will also reset the article edit date, so wait with your summer camp articles here. Personally, I go for style-faction name as my style text, so for Slanesh it will be style-slanesh. Keep an eye on upper and lowercase spelling here, so you can address the text correctly in your CSS. For style text, I stick with all lowercase. And that's the basic planning. Next week, I will start with the actual CSS work. And that's it for today. If this video was helpful or entertaining for you, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting and doing all the different stuff that helps my channel grow. Here you can find another English video of mine and the playlist with all my English videos I did so far. Until next time, bye!